the Buddha's instructions for breath meditation after you've got your body in position. He says to establish mindfulness to the fore. In other words, you make up your mind what you're going to try to remember as you meditate, and bring that to the forefront. Make it stand out in your mind. In Thai, they say to set your mind up. And of course, what often happens after you've set your mind up like this is that it falls over. You determine to stay with the breath, but something else comes in. Either an outside noise distracts you, or other thoughts in the mind come up. And you go wandering after wherever they may lead you. This is why we have to be alert to notice when this is happening. And then mindfulness kicks in again to bring you back to the breath. This act of reminding here is very important, because the mind so easily forgets. In the beginning, when you remind yourself, you have to use full sentences, stay here, stay with the breath, don't wander away, whatever it takes to keep you remembering to stay with the breath, and then whatever other things you need to do with the breath in order to make it easier to stay. You may remind yourself to breathe comfortably or to focus on a certain part of the body. This is one of the reasons why we have to study the text, at least to some extent. A couple of months back I was asked to give a talk on the topic of whether it really is necessary to know anything about what the Buddha said if you're going to meditate. And if you think of mindfulness simply as being aware, there's not that much you would need to study. Your awareness is right here. It's happening all the time. What else do you need to know? But you realize that mindfulness means keeping something in mind. You begin to remember there are a lot of things you need to keep in mind while you practice. Sometimes it involves keeping in mind your motivation, why you're here. Sometimes it involves keeping the Four Noble Truths in mind, remembering we're here to look for stress or its cause or the path to its cessation. And then you have to remember the duties that go along with those Four Truths. If stress or pain comes up, you have to remember, don't run away, because it's so easy to want to avoid the pain or to try to push it away. But our duty with regard to the stress and the pain is to comprehend it, which means we have to watch it. We have to watch it steadily. In fact, our gaze has to be steadier than the pain, so you begin to see how the pain comes and goes and what comes and goes along with it. If you see that there's an uptick in the level of your stress, you can ask yourself, well, what did I think just now? What did I do just now? Or if the level of stress goes down, what did you do? Because that's how you see the relationship between cause and effect. It's not enough to say, well, Stress is inconstant. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it goes, and just leave it at that. The coming and going has a cause, and you want to look deeper into where the cause is. You've got to remember this. Once you see the cause, then you remember the duty, which is to let it go. In other words, to stop doing whatever it was that caused the stress to come. Now, to do this requires not only steadiness of mind, but also a sense of well-being. That's why we practice concentration. The Buddha compares concentration to food. You're a soldier in a fortress at the edge of a country, and you need food in order to fight off the enemy, in other words, your defilements. 
Your mindfulness needs food, too. Your mindfulness is the gatekeeper, watching whoever might want to try to come into the for fortress and remember who's a friend and who is a foe. And mindfulness just doesn't, doesn't just sit there and watch the, both the friends and the foes coming in. If someone's a friend, they're allowed in. If someone's a foe, foe they're not allowed in. In other words, if you see unskillful mental states arising, you don't want to allow them in to destroy your concentration. Both the soldiers, which are right effort, and the gatekeeper, right mindfulness, require food, and that's what the right concentration is for. To give you the strength you need in order to watch pain or to watch stress, physical or mental, and not feel threatened by it, not feel overwhelmed by it. The food gives you strength. So this is why you have to keep reminding yourself, stay with the breath, stay with the breath. And not just stay with the breath, there are the steps in breath meditation. When you know the breath well, you start to try to be aware of the whole body. And stay aware of the whole body as you breathe in, stay aware of the whole body as you breathe out. When you're aware of the whole body, you begin to see how the breath has an impact on the, the different properties of the body, how it affects the energy flow in the body, how it affects the sense of warmth or coolness in the body, how it affects the blood pressure, not only the rate of the blood pressure, but where the blood is being pushed. If when you breathe in you have a feeling that the energy has to come up, 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 well that's going to push the blood up into your head, which may be good sometimes, especially right after a meal when all the blood is settling down into your stomach. You need some blood to come up to your head in order to stay awake. But then there are other times when too much blood in your head leads to a headache. So you have to notice how the flow of the breath energy has an impact on these different processes in the body, and then you try to adjust them. First to give rise to a sense of fullness and well-being, and then a sense of calm. These are some of the things you have to remember. The main duty of mindfulness is to remember these things. And when you read how they're described in the texts, they're full sentences. These are verbal fabrications. I will breathe in sensitive to the whole body. I will breathe out sensitive to the whole body. You try to rem remind yourself that way. I will breathe in calming bodily fabrication. I'll breathe out calming bodily fabrication, and all the way through. Breathing in sensitive to mental fabrication, perceptions and feelings. Breathing out sensitive to mental fabrication. The steps don't mention verbal fabrication, but each step is in itself a form of verbal fabrication, the way you remind yourself what you want to do as you breathe in, what you want to do as you breathe out. Now as the mind begins to settle in, those fabrications grow more subtle. When you're able to stay well with the breath, the breath feels good. There's a sense that the mind begins to dissolve into the breath. The mind and the breath become one. Your awareness fills the body, the breath fills the body. At that point you can drop the verbal fabrication, but it doesn't mean you drop mindfulness. At that stage, mindfulness becomes a perception. It's simply the perception is how you remind yourself. You may have a mental image of the breath or a mental image of the spot where you want to stay focused, or just the word breath. At that point, when it's not a full sentence, it's just a word. It doesn't count as verbal fabrication anymore. It's not mental fabrication. It's a perception. And that becomes your marker. That becomes your reminder of where you are, where you want to be. At this point, your hindrances are far away. Disturbances are far away. They may be nibbling at the edge of your awareness, but they don't really pose any threat. Which is why mindfulness can 
gets simpler. Its messages to you get simpler. Just breath, breath, breath. Or you may have a visual image of how the breath is flowing in the body. Just hold that image in mind. That too is a perception. That becomes the means by which mindfulness stays maintained. And then it progresses. As you go deeper and deeper in concentration, the perception gets more subtle. It gets more refined. But all the way through, it's the means by which you remind yourself where you are, what you're doing. So there are times in the meditation when mindfulness is a verbal fabrication. There are other times, as the concentration gets stronger, where the mindfulness just becomes a mental fabrication. The message you have to give yourself gets simpler. It's the same as when you're trying to steer a sailboat. If there are a lot of gusty winds, a lot of waves, the hand with which you hold the rudder has to clamp the rudder really tightly. And you have to use a lot of strength to make sure that the, the boat doesn't tip over, go off course. But when this wind is smooth and the water is smooth, all you have to do is just barely touch the rudder, and you stay on course. So it's the same as you're settling down. In the beginning it takes a lot of work and it requires a lot of determination and a lot of reminders. Stay here, stay here, don't wander off. And as the mind begins to settle down, then the nature of the mindfulness grows more subtle. And you do have to be careful not to drift off when the breath gets subtle. But the nature of your, your warning to yourself, the nature of your reminder, it gets more subtle. Just remind yourself, whole body breathing in, whole body breathing out. That's it. Or just whole body, whole body. Especially when the breath grows still. And so on with the more subtle levels of concentration. When you go into the formless levels, it's more an image of space. The space around the body, the space permeating throughout the body in between every atom. You just hold that image in mind. That's your reminder. So the reminding in the beginning has to take a lot of a lot of effort. And sometimes you're reminded to yourself, you're not just sitting there gently reminding yourself, you're yelling at yourself, why are you wandering off? Come on back. But as the mind gets more tame, it gets a greater sense of ease, well-being, refreshment in the meditation, then it's a lot easier to stay here. That's one of the reasons why we work with the breath, to make the work of mindfulness easier. And its messages can become simpler, more gentle, but still effective. This is how the concentration develops as a skill, as you move from the step of getting the mind to be with the breath, or establishing it on the breath, to maintaining it. Setting it up is one thing. Keeping it set is something more refined. <laughs>